This video will cover a quick review of lighting and shadows. In this scene, we have just a standard ground plane and a sphere, and we have no lights. If you want to see how many lights or what lights you have in your scene, you can always do that through the Outliner, which you can access from Window and Outliner. And if we look in this Outliner, you can see we have just the default light sets that Maya creates when you first create a scene. But we have no other lights in this scene. So let's go and create a spotlight. I'll go to the rendering tab and select spotlight. And if I hit my move tool, I can bring my spotlight up. And you can see I have my spotlight listed in my outliner right here. Let's close this. And I want to move my light through my top view. So I will go to panels and look through selected so my light turns into a camera. And I will adjust my light. So now we're not seeing anything in our viewport. We're not seeing any of the effects of our lighting in this viewport. In order to be able to see that, we need to make adjustments to our lighting menu. So go to lighting and switch to use all lights. Now we see our lighting, but again, it doesn't look good. We don't have a very good quality in our viewport. So in order to change that, we need to switch to viewport 2.0. So we can go to our renderer and switch to viewport 2.0. And here we have a nice updated feedback of our lighting. So one of the things that makes lighting look good, we can go to our render view and just see what this looks like. Get in here. Okay, good. So now we have a nice close up of here. We'll make sure you're rendering with mental ray. You can see that our light is hitting the sphere and it's hitting the ground plane, but we don't have any shadows. Normally a light would create shadows, um, but in Maya you would need to turn that on in order to get that effect in your renders. So let's go to our attribute editor for our spotlight. These are the attributes for our spotlight. You can change the cone angle. and the penumbra, and everything updates in our viewport, which is nice. So if we wanted to work with shadows, we have a tab over here for shadows. And if you open that up, you can see we have shadow color, something called depth map shadows, and ray trace shadows. I will go over all of these attributes in this video. Shadow color, if you click on it, brings you the standard color dialog box, and you can come in here and change the color of your shadow if you would like. And, um, or you can leave it as black. So depth map shadows is one way of creating shadows. So let's click on this use depth map shadows. And you can see once we click on that button, we still don't see any shadows. So let's do a render. And there we go, we have shadows in our render, but we don't see it in the viewport. That's another thing that we need to turn on if you wanna be able to see it in your viewport. In order to see the shadows in your viewport, you need to go to lighting and click on the shadows option. And as soon as you do, we get to see our shadows in our viewport. It's nice to see everything in the viewport because you are able to see what your scene is going to look like without having to go through rendering it. Rendering takes a little bit of time and viewport feedback is immediate. When using depth map shadows, these are the attributes we can change to alter the look of our shadows. Let's go into the render view. And you can see this is the way it looks right now with our depth map shadows turned on. This this checkbox will enable you to start using your depth map shadows. We have an option here called resolution. This will increase the quality of the look of your depth map shadow. We have filter size. 
at a high filter size, three or five, you can see it's a very soft looking shadow. I will save this image so we can refer back to our changes. And if we bring this all the way down to zero, you see our depth map shadows have a very sharp edge. So at a high value, high filter size, it's a soft shadow. And at a low filter size, it's a sharp edged shadow. And we can change this to increase the quality of our shadow. And it takes a little bit longer to render once you increase that filter size. But you can see if you go back and forth around this edge of the shadow, that we have a smoother edge by increasing the resolution. And if we change the shadow color, and do a render, you can see that we're able to change the color of the shadow. For instance, if you're doing an outdoor scene in the snow, you probably would want to have a color of your shadows more along these colors rather than straight black. Um, you always have to think about what environment you're trying to emulate in your scene and you can make, and you can make adjustments accordingly. I will leave the shadow color at black and we'll leave it like that. And I'm going to just delete all of these. And I'll turn depth map shadows off and let's take a look at ray traced shadows. Let's turn ray trace shadows on and we'll do a test render. And now you can see with a ray trace shadow with a light radius at zero, we have a very sharp edged shadow. So let's turn these up to one. And now you can see at a light radius of one, a higher value, you start getting a softer edged shadow. It does look a little blocky over here and speckly, but if we turn up our shadow rays, say to 16, and I will save this, and we can do a new render. Here we go. So if we go back to our previous one with a shadow ray of one, you can see it's very speckled and blocky. And we go back to the one with 16 shadow rays, and it looks a lot clearer. So that shadow rays will give you a more resolution on your shadow when using ray traced shadows. It looks a lot smoother. Ray traced shadows are nice because you can see you have a nice sharp edge over here, and as when the distance of that shadow between your your object that's creating the shadow gets larger it starts getting um, softer so you're getting a much more natural looking shadow with a ray trace shadow ray trace shadows are a great shadow to use because they work with transparencies and refractions if you're using depth map shadows they will not work with transparencies so that is a quick overview of shadows in Maya.